By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back at X Points. This is final number 24 of the X Points tournaments series. And in the finals, we've got Rich Shea versus Nicholas. Rich Shea is playing red, white, aggro, and Nicholas is playing a deck called Mad Atok. It's red and black. Now, before I jump into the deck decks, I would just give you uh, want to give you a little bit of information about X Points. So X Points is a format that plays according to the Atlantic rule set, meaning they play with Fallen Empires, a Mana Burn is real, only one strip, but four workshops. Those are kind of some of the basics of their rule set. And because it's X points, it means you can only spend 10 points on cards that have points allocated to them. And here you can see the current overview. So for example, if I want to play all my five Moxen, that's fine, I may do so, but that means I've spent all my 10 points because each Mox is costing me two points and I cannot exceed the 10 point limit. So you really have to kind of puzzle and find out what works best for your current brew. For example, if you want to play with four Mishra's Factories, you may, but that is gonna cost you four points. So with this list, you're usually gonna make some tough decisions and that should uh, mean that you have more variants in the decks. I believe that is the goal of the format. Okay, so this is the current point list. Now, um, before I start with the deck decks, I've, I've got beautiful deck photos of both of these decks. I would first just like to point out that if you wanna skip that section, I know some of you wanna go straight to the games and maybe check out the deck decks later. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there, it'll take you straight to the action. As for now, I'm going to start with the deck deck. I'm gonna start with the deck of Rich. Let's take a look. And here we see the deck of Rich Shea. Now this is uh, actually, I said it was red, white, aggro, but it also has Lance Edge, Land Tax in here. So it's kind of a combination of two decks, isn't it? Uh, two decks that are quite well known. So let me first kind of explain the Lance Edge, Land Tax synergy. You probably already know it, but I'm just gonna explain it to you. Land Tax, of course, one white to cast for an enchantment. And during your upkeep, if your opponent has more lands than you, you can search your library for three basic lands, show them, shuffle your library, put those basics into your hand. So Lantex is just, it's such a broken card. It's so good. So we've got Lantexes in here. Then we also have Lance Edge. And Lance Edge is an enchant world from Legends, uh, one red and two to cast, that reads, any player can discard a land and you can deal two points of damage to um, your opponent, basically. So that means that if you can find enough lands, put them into your hand with Lantex, you can have, with Lance Edge on the table, you can just have a lethal situation, right, where you just dump all your lands and you kill your opponent that way. That's usually how Lance Edge and Lantex decks tend to work. Now, what Rich has done is he's combined this with uh, also a well-known strategy, the red and white aggro plan, right? We see Savannah Lions, we see Ironclaw Orcs, we see Ecation Javelin here, because of course you can play Fallen Empires in this format. So those are really aggressive little creatures. You can play them out fast, deal combat damage early, combine that with Chain Lightning, Lightning Bolt, combine that with Black Fights, combine that with Ankh of Mishra, and you're just dealing tons and tons of damage, right? This is just looking very, very strong. So you quickly get your opponent to what? 10, maybe even nine, and then you can finish it with your Lance Edge or just with your burn alone. So even if Rich doesn't draw into Lance Edge, that's fine, you know, if he finds the edge, great, you know, that means some extra damage. I mean, uh, you can trade a land for two points of damage. That's just ideal with a deck like this. Also, look at the casting cost of all these spells. He doesn't need a lot of mana. So he can just keep Lance in hand, and when he draws into a Lance Edge, you know, put the Lance Edge out and dump the Lance out of his hand, trade them in for damage to his opponent. That's just going to be ideal for him. This deck, it's really, really tough to play against, and I think his opponent will need some way to just to gain life or to counter away all the pressure or just, you know, something. Because it, it's looking very lethal. I'm not surprised to find this deck in the finals. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent. And here we see the deck of Nikolai. I said Nicholas earlier, but I believe it's Nikolai, so excuse me for that. Um, and this is red, black, and just a really good deck, right? It's mainly red, by the way. Red is just really good in X points because I believe the burn spells don't have points on them, so that makes it very accessible. So, you know, four chain, four bolts, two fireball, one disintegrate, that's just super burn, isn't it? And then you combine that with just a really good creatures in red. So you got your Setch Troll and you've got your four Atox. So Setch Troll, of course, 
three mana for potentially a 3-3 three, three with regenerate. That's just insane stats for old school. And then you've got Atok, one red and one for this one, two little creature from antiquities. Second artifact against plus two, plus two, because yes, this deck also carries four Ank of Mishra and four Vices, just like the deck of Rich. So that's that's funny. Both of these players kind of have a sim similar strategy uh, from that perspective. I mean, they're both playing with lots of burn and both playing with Vices and Anks. I do think that the Vices for, uh, for Nikolai are going to be a little bit better uh, because, of course, Rich is playing with that land tech strategy. So maybe for Rich, you don't want to draw into all those lands because then you're going to fill your hand up and then that Vice is just going to be a lot better for Nikolai. Then again, if he's got the Lance Edge, he can just discard the Lance and then he can just deal damage to Nikolai and don't take any damage himself the uh, next upkeep. So maybe Vice is a little bit better for Nikolai because of the text, but it's not the end of the world for Rich either. We'll just have to wait and see how it plays out, of course. And then when we look at the rest of the deck, I love to see a card like Darylor. I mean, I'm actually a big fan of Fallen Empires, but the fact of the matter is that people that play with Fallen Empires usually only pick a few cards. And Darylor for me is one of those cards that's in the middle, you know, it's playable, but not in every deck. So whenever I see it, I still get enthusiastic. It's uh, one black and three to cast for a four, four throw that reads all your other black spells cost an additional black. So if you play this, you probably just want to splash it. And that's exactly what Nikolai is doing, right? They're the only black cards that he's playing main. And when we look at the sideboard, it is super interesting, right? Because he's playing uh, with Glooms, he's playing with Terrors, so he's got a little bit of extra black there in the sideboard, and he's also playing with Psychic Purge, and Psychic Purge, of course, a card that's really good in X points, why? Because of the card Him to Turek, a lot of players play with Him to Turek, of course, two black for this sorcery that makes you discard two cards at random, it's just super good, and then when you've got Psychic Purge, you know, if you pick Psychic Purge, then Psychic Purge deals five damage to you, so it's really nice to see it in the in the sideboard. And I guess, Nikolai, you've used it quite a lot. Unfortunately, today, it's not going to be useful for you because your opponent is not playing with hymns, but that's also, fortunately, your opponent is not playing with hymns. Anyway, uh, this is the list of Nikolai. We've also looked at the list of Rich. Two very lean, mean, aggro decks. So I guess we could be in for very, very quick and spiky games, but that's, of course, exactly why this is a final. Let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. So Nikolai here on the play, starting with a mountain and a vice. I know there's some flickering on your screen that will go away, don't worry. It is quite annoying, but I think it's now already gone. So first three points of damage here for Rich. This game, as you can see, is played on Tolaria. A really nice free system to play our old school matches in. It's fantastic. There is a Lantax. Oh, look at this opener by Rich. Also a really good opener. And now the question is, what will Nikolai do? Is he going to play out some more stuff here? Oh man, that is very annoying, the uh, flickering of the screen. I'm sorry guys, there's nothing I can do about it. That's something that happened during recording. But uh, at least it's gone now again. So I think the vice is no longer active for Nikolai, so he's got to find another way. The question is, is he going to play a second land? guess he's not playing a soul ring remember his deck also doesn't need a lot of mana but I mean this is holding Nikolai back here right he's just playing a soul ring passing the turn and remember his deck is also kind of burn heavy look at that even more Lantux so if he can have one single activation it's gonna be nuts there's the attack uh, by Rich by the way putting Nikolai here on 18 and I mean things are looking pretty good for, for Rich here he can just wait and see and Nikolai, if for example, he can draw into an Atok, that would be quite nice. Tapping three here, could also play a Setch. There's the Atok, so a one-two from Antiquities. And I'm starting to see a pattern here with the recording, by the way. I think every time somebody joins the room, you're gonna see that flickering again of the screen, which is very annoying. But we'll just have to wait and see. Rich attacking here with his Savannah Lions, the two one, so he could block here, sack the Vice to kill the lion. That would probably be my line of play. On the other hand, is that what Rich actually wants, right? So maybe then you shouldn't do it, should you? So it's kind of tough, isn't it? Because now it means if Rich gets an activation, the vice is no longer in the way, but maybe Nikolai has another vice in hand. At least he can now attack Rich as well. So Rich dropping to 17 now also, and I wonder if Nikolai has another vice. 
There's a chain. Okay, that's going to deal some damage as well. So Rich dropping here to 13. There's a pass. Let's see what he can do. So this is kind of your land tax stillmate, right? Both players are waiting for the first person to play out that extra land. So Nikolai here drawing a card. There's the attack with the Atok again. I mean, I mean, I, I can see if you're Nikolai, why would you play out a land? You would activate three land taxes. Why not just wait? You've got your soul ring. You've got, you know, you've got your mountain. Look at that. Satch troll. Remember, it's still a 2-2 because there's no black mana in the game. But a 2-2 is still good. It means he can deal three damage a turn. Which means Rich is on a four turn clock. He's on 12 at the moment. So it's, it's quite fine for him. Rich, you're playing a mountain. Look at that. So he's making the decision to start playing a land, giving Nikolai here an opportunity. So we see the uh, Chain Lightning on the Setch. I mean, this is not really bad for Nikolai. What if he has a Black and a Darrow Lord? That would be really good for him. There's a Badlands. Another Setch would be great with that Badlands, right? Because he can keep it untapped to regenerate the Setch. There's a Vice. Okay, that's not going to do too much, but of course he can feed it to the Atok later. There's the attack for one. Going to put Rich here on 11. There's a plow though. Swords to plowshares, taking care of business. That does mean that Nikolai goes up again to 19. It's interesting, when I did the deck decks and I looked at both of these decks, they're quite aggressive with a lot of burn. I expected very quick games, but because of this land tech standoff, these games have become very tactical in nature. Right? It's almost playing like a control kind of game with your with your aggro decks, really trying to think like how to use your, your resources best. And again, I think we see some issues here with the recording. We see Rich waiting. And now he's picking up the cards again. I believe they have some audio issues perhaps. I believe it is Rich's turn, if I'm not mistaken, because there was that plow on the Atok and then the pass, but Rich has taken a card and passed as well. Interesting. So Rich not doing anything with five cards in hand. He is playing a Lightning Bolt here to the dome. That means that Nikolai is going to drop to 15. Okay, and then he's taking his turn. Okay, so he's doing that on end step 10, taking turn. Also meaning he has four in hand. Now he's got five and passing the turn again. So let's see if Nikolai can do anything here. There's again a bolt, I guess again on end step. I mean, these bolts are doing work. That's, that's the thing with direct damage. Even if you do nothing, you contribute nothing to the board. You can just wait until you draw into enough burn, slowly burn your opponent down. I mean, life total of Nikolai is now on 12. Rich is on 12 as well, by the way. There's a winds of change. And in response, we're probably going to see some more burn exactly here. A bolt on the side from Nikolai. Remember, both players playing four bolts, four chains. Now, the way Winds of Change works is you've got to shuffle your hand back into your library and draw that many cards. So we see Rich putting four cards in. So he's going to draw four more cards. I believe Nikolai has six cards in hand, if I'm not mistaken. So he's going to draw six more cards or maybe five after playing that bolt. And both players, of course, looking for something. And shuffling up here. And I think, I mean, this is really the luck of the draw, isn't it? I mean, Nikolai can draw some more cards, so maybe for him it's slightly better. You know, because I assume he's played out all of his burn already. Yeah, six cards here for Nikolai and four, I believe, for Shea. And of course, it's still uh, Shea's turn or Rich's turn. And the land taxes are not doing anything for him so far. And I actually think Nikolai doesn't need more than four mana with his deck, if I look at the list. So there's no reason for him to activate. There's an Ankh. Again, the Ankh is not going to do much. I think at least. 
Of course, I cannot look in the hand of Nikolai. Maybe it's really bothering him the fact that he cannot play out another land because he doesn't want to activate the taxes. But I don't think uh, it bothers him that much because he can still play cards like this. He can still play Satch Troll, keep regeneration open. He can still play Darylor if he draws into one. He can play Atok. He can play his, his Chain Lightnings, his Burn stuff. Rich at the moment on nine. And there we see an Atok on the side of Rich. And we see a Vice here on the side of Rich. So that's actually pretty sweet for him because he can uh, use those for food for the Atok. And it's going to be harder for Nikolai to decide if he wants to attack with the Sedge or not. If he attacks, he could put Rich on six though. That means he's in double bolt range. I wonder, this is really interesting, this attack, the block by the Atok. Then he's going to gobble up an Ankh. Then we see a regeneration probably from Nikolai, exactly. So basically what he's done with his Satch is destroyed one of the artifacts on the side of Rich, which is not too shabby. Remember, Rich also has that Mox Pearl, of course, that he can feed to the Atok. So Rich could attack next turn, potentially deal 5 points of damage. This is interesting. This is interesting. Are we going to see another Satch? Another Satch. So here, um, Nikolai is taking a little risk because he wants to block the Atok, so it's an understandable risk. But now, of course, Rich has finally land tax activation. Look at him go. And I mean, he's got so many taxes. This is insane. If he wants to, we can look up nine lands, ladies and gentlemen, nine basics. I don't think he's gonna, but he could. Maybe he, if he's got a lance edge in hand, this is golden, right? He can deploy the edge, dump all his lands, win game one. It's as simple as that. That is how explosive this deck can be. And I wonder if Nikolai is expecting a Lance Edge. Because in a lot of these decks, you do see right, uh, Red White Aggro uh, more commonly being played this way with Lantex there as well. Just like you see White Weenie with Lantex. But usually when people play Lance Edge, they tend to go all in. But here, of course, you only see two Lance Edge in the deck. And the difficult thing with Lance Edge, by the way, is it's two red and one to cast. Uh, meaning you, you do need to devote yourself a little bit more to red than maybe you may want to in these type of decks. Anyway, let's see what Rich can do here with all the lands that he's looked up. I mean, if he doesn't have a Lance Edge, it's actually not looking that great for him. Because he can just play out a land. And, uh, you know... Okay, there's a strip. So he doesn't have a Lance Edge or else he would have played a Mountain here. The nice thing, of course, about Strip Mine is he can also strip him himself if he wants to, to draw additional lands. Another option here is to strip the Swamp, but then Nikolai can make a Regeneration Shield, so that's not really going to give the effect that he wants to. And we are playing according to modern rules, so you can make a Regeneration Shield. In old school, you know, back in the day, in 95, when I started playing Magic, Regeneration didn't work that way. You could only regenerate after damage was dealt. Here we see Ank of Mishra hitting the board by Rich, so more food for the Atok. But again, attacking doesn't really make sense because of that regeneration on Setch. So Rich is kind of stuck in a way. And he's on 9. And that's not great, because next turn, I, I guess Rich is just going to attack with at least one Setch, forcing... I mean, Nikolai is going to attack with at least one Setch. Here we see the Strip. Of the Badlands, yeah, that kind of makes sense because the next turn, if Nikolai decides to attack with the Setch, he has to choose, am I going to regenerate it and then chump with my Setch? Then again, maybe Nikolai has another Swamp in hand. There's the attack with both, very aggressive. Does that mean that he's got more direct damage on board? There's a blocker with the Atok on one of the Setch trolls. I'm expecting him to just sack the Ankh here. Or perhaps Nikolai has a Darylor in hand and he's not planning to regenerate his Setch at all. That's also a line of play he could go for. This is a very interesting combat moment in the game. Sacking here at the Mox. So a 3-4 Atok. Blocking the Setch. Setch is being regenerated. Three points of damage for Rich. No! This is crucial, I believe. This uh, Swords to Plowshares by Rich. That means he's gonna stay on 9, and probably Nikolai expected 3 damage to come through, and maybe he had 6 points of damage in his hand already. Anyway, tapping 3, what are we gonna see? Another Satch! He's really finding those trolls. All 4 have now come onto the battlefield 
One is exiled, one has died to a chain lightning, but two still remain. Now remember, Nikolai doesn't have black open to regenerate. So that means Rich has the option to attack it with the Atok. However, it does mean that Nikolai can then attack for six on the kickback. And I'm not sure if that's something that Rich wants to happen. Remember, he's still on nine. And Nikolai, of course, gained three life after that sword. So he's back up on 12. There we see another vice. I really wonder what Rich is gonna do here. Four cards in hand for him. And I mean, the vice is just not doing much. Not quite sure, by the way, how many cards Nikolai has in hand at the moment. I mean, we can see Rich's hand, count, hand size there, four cards in hand. We do see a five on top of the 12 there when we look at the life total of Nikolai, so perhaps that is his hand size. I believe it is. That would mean he takes two points of damage next turn, going to 10 because of that double vice, which could actually matter in these matchups. Very interesting tactical battle here in uh, game one. I'm really enjoying it. Now let's take a look at the life total. Is he gonna lose life? Yes, he is. And he has to lose two exactly because of the double vice. So he is going to 10. And now Nikolai is here in a difficult position, right? Because of the Ankh of Mishra. If he plays out an extra land, he's gonna take damage, activate the taxes. But of course he wants to empty his hand because of the double vice. So it's, it's tough for him here. Attacking first with the two set trolls putting Rich in a bit of a difficult position here. And I think this is a very good decision from Nikolai because for example, if Rich blocks with the Atok, sex the Ankh to the Atok, that's not too bad for Nikolai because it means he can play out a land without taking damage. Here he goes for the Vice, also not too bad for Nikolai because that means he only takes one point if he decides not to play out anything. I mean, playing out a land for Nikolai is far from great because you're activating the taxes on the side of Rich and Rich here taking three points of damage, it seems, dropping to six. This is very dangerous here for Rich. I mean, he's really into the red zone now. And both players don't have any life gain in their decks. Like a little bit of life gain against these decks would be quite good. You could even consider adding healing solves to your sideboards with these type of decks. Personally, I've seen some people playing with spirit links in the sideboard. I think that's a great idea as well. And of course, when you're just playing dominantly red like Nikolai, it is a little bit tougher to find live gain spells in your deck. Rich having four cards in hand. Nikolai, it seems, five cards in hand. He's now in his second main after combat. What is he gonna do? Rich is on six. If he can find another chain, it's looking quite good for him. There's a mountain, interesting choice. Does that mean he's got double bolt, for example? Tapping both reds. There's an Atok. Ooh, I was expecting something else. I was expecting like a double bolt scenario because now you're activating Rich's taxes. This is risky. But look at that, he's not doing it. Maybe he took out all the basics already. Of course, Nikolai has that vice. I forgot about that vice in hand there. So now we see that Vice tax not really working out for Rich here. And Rich is saying, you got this. There's nothing I can do. Wow. This was an interesting game one there. And here you could see that moment where he played out that other mountain. I was like, why is he doing that? Forgetting about, of course, that Vice in the hand of Nikolai. Meaning that, you know, yeah, you know, going for the Lance would have been really bad for Rich. And Rich, knowing he's on six, he knew, okay, I am not going to win this anymore. You've got game one. Now both players are going to sideboard and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So Rich on the play after losing that first game here in the finals of X points 24. It looks like he's taking a mulligan here to six. Let's see what he can do. Starting with the plateau into an ivory tower. And of course, that ivory tower not being so great after the mulligan. But the life gain, of course, is super. I talked a little bit about life gain in game one. Completely forgot, Rich, that you have ivory towers in your sideboard. So that is pretty sweet. Nikolai here starting with a mountain and just a pass. So that's pretty good, giving Rich some breathing space maybe to build up his hand. He's got five in hand now. Obviously, if you're Rich, you really want to play out a Lantex here. There's a strip mine, though, stripping the mountain, passing the turn. 
Let's see what Nikolai can do. Another mountain and probably just a pass here. Doesn't have a lot of turn one options. And they seem to be discussing the earlier play with the strip mine on the mountain. Anyway, there's a new mountain in town now and uh, Nikolai just passing the turn here back to Rich. Rich finding some pressure here in the form of his Havana Lions and there is a quick bolt on the Lion. And if Nikolai of course can find a Vice, then the Vice and Ivory Tower kind of trigger each other out. There's a pass though from Nikolai, no lands for him. So that's interesting. Rich now on 5, maybe you just want to keep the cards in hand to activate the Ivory Tower next turn. Start gaining some life. So both players playing very slow, which is interesting with their decks. Here we see a tap by Nikolai, a Chain Lightning here on the life total of Rich. But this Chain just doesn't seem so good because Rich is going to gain a life again. Go back up to 18 because of the tower, 6 in hand passing the turn. So Rich is really kind of planning on First gaining a lot of life. Are we going to see an Atok here? No, we're going to see a Shatter. Nice. Shatter on the tower. That is a very important move by Nikolai. And now Rich is going up to 7. I'm expecting a land drop here from him. Or perhaps a land text. That would be quite nice. A land drop and an Iron Claw Oryx 2-2. That cannot block creatures that have a power greater than 1. So it's really made for attacking. That's probably what it wants to do next turn. Let's see if Nikolai can find... An answer. Let's first see if it can find a land. Remember, he already missed a land drop earlier. And for Nikolai, you really want to have kind of four lands. If you've got four mana, you can do basically everything that you want to do. Here we see a bolt on the Iron Claw Orc and passing the turn. And Rich here having two lands as well and just passing. Interesting game. Perhaps they're both stuck on land. I believe Nikolai is definitely. So there's an Atok in the pass. Are we going to see a bolt on the Atok? No, we're not. There's a plateau and a pass. So Rich finding a land there from the top of his library. There's the attack for one from Nikolai. Rich dropping to 17. Tapping two here, are we going to see another Atok? There's another Atok. The Atoks do need some food though. There's an Ivory Tower by Rich. These towers are really good. I mean, if Rich can just kind of keep the tower on board, it's looking really good for him because he's got six cards in hand, so that's two life a turn against an aggro deck. That's really good. Nikolai attacking here for two points. Putting Rich on 15. But of course, next turn he's going to go back up to 17 again because of the tower. 7 in hand passing the turn. Rich is like, I'm fine. I got the tower. I'm good. I'm just going to gain some life. Sit back. Keep my resources in hand. And again, he's going to drop to 15. There's another Atok. I mean, Nikolai really needs some food for those starving, starving Atoks. He's got three of them now on the board. Eight cards for Rich now, by the way, starting his turn. Going back up to 18. There's an Ecation Javelin here, so that comes into play with a Javelin Counter. You can tap it, take the Javelin Counter off to deal one point of damage to any target. It looks like a very interesting uh, counter there, Rich. Anyway, we see another Mountain being played by Nikolai. Nikolai's problem here is the Ivory Tower. He already played a Shatter earlier in the game, but he needs another one. Attacking with this full army of Atox. Putting Rich back on 15. And playing a Gloom. So from the sideboard, Gloom and Enchantment. One black and two to cast. That reads, all your white spells now cost an additional three. And the use of your Circle of Protection also costs an additional three. So for example, if you want now want to play a Disenchant, you need five mana. So that's quite good. Again, there seem to be some connection issues. We see Nikolai waving his hand. Trying to fix his cam, but I have to say, Nikolai, I've got a perfect view of your cam, also of uh, Rich at the moment. And now they're even out of the game, but now they're back into the game. Okay, we're just going to wait and see what's going to happen. 
Okay, they're back. A little bit to the right, but that's okay. So the gloom there on the battlefield in the past, but still the problem remains here for uh, Nikolai, which is that ivory tower. And I believe Rich has six in hand, so he's probably going to go to 17. We're just going to have to wait and see. So yeah, gonna take his turn, gonna gain two life, I believe, go up to 17 if I'm not mistaken. Oh, go up to 18, so I guess he had seven in hand. Playing a planes there. Attacking here for one of the Javelin here. Gonna put Nikolai on 19, passing the turn. So again, super interesting match, right? After sideboarding, this has become even more of a control match between these two aggro decks than it was in game one. And I think as long as Rich can keep the Ivory Tower alive and kicking, it's looking really good for him. Nikolai again attacking Rich, putting him on 15. Okay, there we see a Setch, which is a risk because he doesn't have a black open to regenerate it. So he's kind of inviting Rich here to play a Bolt. Probably if he has a Bolt, he's gonna wait till after the upkeep because you wanna get that extra life from your tower. Of course, he also plays with swords, so he's got some answers to regeneration creatures. And here we see Rich, and he's tapping the full four mana for this swords because of the gloom. So that does mean some life gain for Nikolai. He's going to go up to 22. And then, of course, it's understandable for Rich because he wants to untap his lands again, so he's not going to wait for that ivory tower trigger. Remember, untap, upkeep, draw. Oh, and the players are gone again. We're going to have to wait and see. Will they come back? Hey, they're back. There's a lot of stuff happening. Anyway, the Swords is taking care of the set. We're going to try to keep you up to date. Now, there was another glitch, as you can see here. So now we're back again. The situation is Rich is on 16. Nikolai has gained a life somehow. He's on 21. Oh, of course, because he went back up with the Sedge. Then there was an attack by the Javelinier. So that makes sense. Okay, so Nikolai's on 21. Rich is on 16. And let's hope that the connection will be good for the rest of the match. We just have to wait and see. And Nikolai attacking here with all his Atox. Putting in three points of damage. But of course, Rich still has the tower. Got five cards in hand, or six, I believe, actually. There's another Gloom. That is tough. In response, a Disenchant, though, on the first Gloom. So that's good for Rich, because with, like, two Glooms, it would have been almost impossible for Rich to play anything out. It does mean that, of course, his tower is not going to give him a lot of life. Only one, it seems. He's got five in hand. So he is going to go up a little bit, but he's losing more life than he's... Uh, he's gaining less life than he's losing. That's what I'm trying to say. He's now on 14. There's the attack with the Javelineers. Nikolai going on 20. And there's the pass. I'm tapping here with the Atox. And hopefully we can watch the rest of the match without glitches, but we'll just have to wait and see. There's first the attack with all the Atox, putting Rich on 11. And he's got six in hand, it seems, so he's gonna go back up to 13. But ever so slowly, Rich is losing more and more life. Untapping here with the Javelinier. Gonna gain some life, of course, gonna go back up to 13. I mean, one of the things that Rich can consider doing is blocking the Atog and then um, dealing one extra point of damage with the Javelin counter, killing an Atog probably. And unfortunately, we had a problem again with the connection, so you could see that I skipped part of the match because it was just a frozen image, but we're back now, so Rich uh, attacked. Nikolai on 20, now taking his turn. And Rich still on 13. So he's now gonna attack Rich, gonna put him on 10. And then he's gonna play another Gloom. Gloom number three, wow. Will there be another disenchant? I mean, these glooms are a big problem for Rich. 
Now he's got to pay six extra, so he's got to pay seven for his swords to plowshares. That's insane. Rich here tapping three. What are we going to see? It's hard to see. It's a red creature. Oh, it's a falling star. That is pretty cool. A falling star. Wow, that is awesome, Rich. I love it. Oh man, so Falling Star card from Legends, you gotta flip it just like a Chaos Orb and everything it hits, it deals three points of damage. So he's gonna try to kill all three Atox with one star. This, this is very exciting because it's also an important moment in the game for Rich. Oh man, here we go! Yo, he's hitting all three with the Falling Star! That is amazing! What a maestro this man is. Rich man, well done. Falling Star killing all three Atox on the side of Nikolai. That is tough. And now it's looking mighty good for Rich again. He's still on 13. He's got the tower. All the Atox are gone. It's great. Nikolai tapping two mountains. What can he do? There's a Felber Stone. That means next turn he can potentially play out a Darylor, a 4-4 creature. He's playing with four of those in his deck. There's the pass. Rich, of course, going up a little bit because of the tower. Oh, a little, a lot actually. Seven in hand, it seems. Going back up to 16. It's looking really good for Rich after that Falling Star. Attacking for one. Nikolai down to 18. There's another Plateau. Or are we going to see some more pressure on the board from Rich? For example, an Iron Claw Orc would be quite good here. Oh, and it looks like we lost the players again. Give me a moment. I try to find out. Okay, they're back. So they, they just have a lot of issues here at the moment. I think it's cost because there are so many players watching the game when they were streaming this. So it's not an ideal recording, but I still wanted to show you the finals because I just think it's really cool to document these finals. This is X Points Final 24. If you want to see more finals, by the way, there's a playlist. I'll put it in the description below where you can find all the X Points games and the finals that you can find here on Timmy Talks. So Rich passing the turn, Nikolai on 18, Rich on 16. There is another factory. Or actually another, there's the first factory because there's it's the first factory of this game. <laughs> The factory could be quite useful. And again, it looks like the players are gone and back again. Hey, they're back. Okay, this is starting to get really, really annoying. So hopefully they can, you know, continue with the game without any more disruptions. We'll just have to wait and see. There's the tap of four. There's a Darylor, 4-4 four, four Darylor. Seven in hand by Shea, so he's gonna go up to 19. I mean, Darylor is good, it can make a dent, but the problem here for, for Nikolai is still that ivory tower. Look at him go up in life, going up to 19. Remember, he's got to pay six extra for like uh, a white spell, like a Sword of Plowshares, for example, because of the double gloom on the side of Nikolai. So that's also a problem for Rich. But if Rich can find a land, here we go. A mana source, he can now play a Swords. Oh, that's so funny, playing an Ecation Javelin here for seven. That is hilarious. That is hilarious. There's the pass. I think if you're Nikolai, you could consider attacking here with your factory, because next turn... Rich can kind of kill it when you activate it. Although, of course, a Nikolai can pump it. I don't know, it's tough. Anyway, attacking here with the Darylor, Rich taking the damage, dropping to 15, but of course, next turn he's gonna gain two life back again, gonna go back up to 17. There's a Setch Troll with a Batlance open to regenerate the troll. There's a Chain Lightning. On one of the creatures, of course, the one that has summoning sickness, that means that Rich cannot tap it to deal a point of damage to Nikolai. And I have to say, I mean, the match is going slow, also with all the interruptions, but slowly, with like a snail pace, is this, this game is gonna 
uh, is looking to go more and more towards Nikolai. So it's looking bad for Rich. Remember, Rich is already uh, down a game. So he cannot afford to lose. And Nikolai here playing another Swamp. I guess he's just going to attack for 7 here. He's also going to animate. Yeah, why not? Of course. Go for it. Look at that. 9 points of damage on the table all of a sudden. And that's really tough for Rich. Going to drop back to 8. And yes, he's going to gain some life from the towers, but... Don't think that's gonna cut it for him. Remember, he's gotta win this game or else he's losing the finals here. Finals 24 of the X points. He had, of course, a very memorable play with that Falling Star, killing three Atox with his Falling Star, but it's looking very gloom for him at the moment. Taking his turn now, gaining a little bit of life, going back up to 10, I believe. At least he needs the swords to take care of one of his problems. Probably then the Darylaw, right? Although he can also consider with the swords, go for the Satch, wait for maybe a Bolt, use Bolt and Occasion Javelinier counter together to kill a Darylaw. That's also an option. And I think Rich has to keep his uh, Occasion Javel Javelinier untapped here. And Rich... Trying to find an answer. He is finding a lot of lands, which is good because it means the glooms are not as effective. Passing the turn here back to Nikolai. The question is, is he going to attack here also with the factory? He is giving Shay the option to trade the Javelineers for the factory. But do you really want that? Because it means you take 7 points of damage, you would go to, to 3. I wonder, does he have, for example, a Bolt? And I think he is going to go for the trade then. Okay, so he is blocking... I think a Bolt and a Javelin counter on the Darylor, and then also blocking the Sedge, meaning he only takes two points of damage. Or, yeah. That's what's happening. So he takes two points, goes down to eight. There's another Darylor though. Oh, this is looking bad for Shea. So, I mean, I think Shea did that block really well, right? Because he only took three points of damage and he killed a creature there. So that was pretty good. The problem here is that the pressure continues from Nikolai with the other Darylor there in his second main. He is going to go up a little bit. He's now on nine thanks to the Ivory Tower, but it's not enough. He's passing the turn. And actually, Nikolai's got 9 on the board. He could finish it right now. Let's see if Rich has a Bolt or a Swords to keep himself alive. This is interesting. Nikolai attacking only for 7, though. And not for the lethal 9. That is surprising. I really expected him to attack here for lethal, but he has other plans, it seems. Fireball. Okay, that does the trick. Fireball for 2. That does the trick. Oh, look at that. There's a Divine... Offering cool on the Felwer Stone. That means he's gonna gain two life. And then Nikola has another fireball though. Oh, that is unfortunate. That is unfortunate. And this is also maybe why uh, Nikola, of course, in uh, in his first fireball should have just paid some more mana, put some more mana into that fireball. On the other hand, he had another fireball as a backup. So. Uh, yeah, Nikolai really winning this. And what a grindy, grindy, grindy match this was. I really expected very quick games turned out to be super grindy. Unfortunately, the recording quality isn't all that great, but I still hope that you enjoyed this match. And I mean, I kind of love this, you know, looking at two aggro decks where you think it's probably going to be maybe even a little bit boring because both decks are going to go so fast. It'll be over very soon. Burn, 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 burn. Whoever gets most burn wins. But no, that's not the case at all. When you look at these matches, super tactical, super grindy, very interesting to look at. Thank you, Rich and Nikolai, for sharing your skills here on the channel. And if you want to join X Points, check out the description below for a link to their Facebook page. They also have a YouTube page with a lot more matches. So if you want to see some other decks, check that out. I also have an X Points playlist, as I mentioned earlier. You can check that out as well. And before you go, I'd like to ask you to subscribe and ring that bell. And if you're already subscribed, 
Super cool, man. Thank you so much. Then I'm going to ask you to do three easy things like share and comment on this video. All these things help to, uh, to let the channel grow even further still. So if you want to support Timmy Talk, these are three easy things that you can do. And then there's a last thing that you can do, and that is become a patron of the show on patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. You can find out how you can become a patron. It already starts with $1 a month. And for that, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord and uh, you can join all the Timmy Talks online events. So take a moment to check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks and maybe it is something for you. Oh yeah. And if you join the Patreon program, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? The light in the morning. Way, day, and up she rises. Way, day, and up she rises. Way, day, and up she rises. Her light in the morning. Put him in the long boat until he's sober. Put him in the long boat until he's sober. Put him in the long boat until he's sober. Her light in the morning. Way, day, and up she rises. Way. Somebody can see.